and it's like, and, it, and I mean, it can be made an argument if it's a valid argument across the board, but it's never given across the board because the same argument wasn't given when it comes to Biden was in office or when it comes to your local politicians that actually can implement some of the stuff that you're looking for when it comes to reparations. But all of a sudden, now that it's a, a black candidate, you want to say, well, what is she done for the black community? Same thing with, with uh, Barack Obama. What has he done for the black community? And, you know, until they sign, like, reparations, you know, I, you know, they, they're not going to get my support. But I'm like, well, <laughs> do you even understand how a bill is created and then what does it look like? Because I always ask this question when people say that. Because I'm like, what is it that you're actually looking for when you look for reparations? I'm like, oh, are you even talking to your local officials or your your your, your house representative to even get them? Because some of y'all forgot about Schoolhouse Rocks and you didn't pay attention to it. Or you didn't grow up in the time it was published on TV because we used to see it all the time on PBS growing up. When I started, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. And then he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress and I became a bill. You don't even come back to even correct yourself. And sometimes I do look, now sometimes there's a bunch of trolls on here, but I look at this one, this is not even an actual troll, this is like a legitimate woman, a legitimate sister, which well, I'm not showing her face, I told you before I try to I protect my own people, as long as you ain't no Amorosa or nobody like that, I'm gonna protect my people. You can see her name, but she legitimate life coach. She actually, I mean, she posts on social media. So I'm like, so this is a real person asking this question or saying this. And I'm just like, well, what are you actually doing? Because a lot of people that sit online and complain, you look at my comments sometimes from my videos, you complaining, but you're not even doing nothing in these streets. Like you're not out volunteering. You're not out helping nobody run for office. You're not even out help reelect somebody that you actually do this like in office. You're not doing any community service work. You're not out feeding the homeless. You are not, you're not out doing any food drives. I mean, you're not doing hardly any of these things, but you want to sit online and be a keyboard warrior and you want to have this platform to think that. And you have every right to, to comment like everybody else has every, every right to comment. But one thing I stand behind is if you're not putting in the work to actually do something and, and you're looking for this to actually gauge a candidate or an elected official, you can shut the hell up. Unless you're providing some tangible tangible solutions to make change for what you're looking for. Like if you're looking for a reparations bill to be signed and you can actually intelligently say what is it look, that you're looking for when it comes to reparations and you can get some piggyback behind, from, not piggyback, but you can get some support from other people to actually coincide with what it is that you're trying to push. I, I'm cool with that. Whether you volunteer or not, I'm cool with that. But if you just arbitrarily just throwing that out there as a measuring tool and you're not using that same tool for other people out there, especially those that don't look like us, and you quiet, you gladly show up to vote for them, or you just don't show up at all, which is still stupid. Because we say this, it gives people like this clown. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black, and now she wants to be known as black. To come back and try to use that against us. Or to, to say that, She's not even with you all. Y'all need to stop this. Like, you really need to stop this. And if you want to have this discussion, let's have this discussion intelligently. And let's talk about what is it we're actually looking for and who it's going to actually go to because it can only go to those who are actually descendants of slaves in this country and not other people who have migrated in. Sorry for y'all. Y'all came in after the fact. Y'all, cut this crap out. And this goes along with what I was saying before. You're so worried about what somebody has done for the black community, which you should be to a degree so much so that you're going to withhold your vote, but you're not doing it for everybody else. It's like, it's not a mutual thing. It's only for a black candidate. But here you have somebody locally that's doing everything they can to take you back to a time to where you don't even have a right to vote. Because here it is, Brian Kemp has signed this new bill into place to have the county dispute for whatever reason, if they find a reasonable inquiry to challenge the votes of the people within, his, within the state of Georgia with 91 days left before the actual general election take place. Now, how much sense does that make? Why when it's done during the primaries? Why wasn't this it's implemented the first part of this year when he actually put new bills into place? And it's to take your votes and take your rights away from you. And here you are worried about, talking about what has somebody done for us right now? <laughs> Which, it can be a concern or argument, but it's not valid. And you're not doing anything to address any of the local issues that's taking place that actually do affect you. Oh my God, I'm just playing with them now, yeah. Oh my God, what she's...